Ce que je me rappelle, c'est que dès qu'on est rentré dans la crèche, il y avait une certaine odeur que je n'ai jamais eue avant ça. C'est drôle, c'est une odeur d'aujourd'hui, de présent, mais cette odeur m'a amené tout de même de nouveau au passé. Je sentais que quelque chose va arriver. Je ne sais pas comment l'expliquer. Ça vient de très profond, dedans. Ma mère s'est séparée de moi. Je ne sais certainement pas ce qu'elle m'a dit. Mais si je peux me mettre à sa place, je suis sûr qu'elle aura plus ou moins les mêmes sentiments. Laisser son enfant toute seule là-bas et partir pour l'inconnu, My name is Jackie Barkan. I could have been a Belgian, a Brusseler, but I'm not, that is more than 50 years already. History brought me to a country which wasn't even mine. This was imposed upon me in a way I was not expecting at all. It is remarkable what a child can absorb. It stays with you for all your life. My mother was separated from me when I was five years old. I felt that I shall never see her again. I always knew it. I survived three years in hiding with two Flemish families. After the war, a an aunt and a cousin came to search for me and they took me to Israel. In the beginning, it was a strange country for me, but at least I could breathe freely. I returned to Brussels with a strange feeling. Within my inner self, I'm torn between the belonging and the strangeness at the same time. Would I be capable to live today as a Belgian among the other Belgians? If history would have evolved in a different way, how would I be able to live as a Jew in this small country? That isn't even a question. After the war of 1940-45, no Jew could resemble the same Jew as before the war and it has little importance in which country or city he lives in. I ask myself, would it have been the same without that little oppressor with his moustache? I only want to fill the missing parts in my memory so that I can go on living quietly a life that has been offered to me twice. I was born in 1938 in the Marol, in Brussels. My parents were Polish Jews who came to Belgium to have a better life. My father was quite a well-known tailor here. I remember only a little from this period. I could never retrace my family's house without my mother's old identification card. I'm afraid that my memory has betrayed me. Is it here that I lived with my parents? I have the impression as if I'm looking at an unknown house. The bell button was changed, but the door still has the very same dark colors. I would love to see the inside of the house to look at the large staircase which leads to the first floor. I remember when my mother went to the grocery to buy milk. She always said that she was going to milk the cows, the Kuyemelken in Flemish. This I remember. The family house, a hole in my memory.
On a tram, a renegade Jew gave my father in. Father was immediately sent to the Caserne d'Ossin in Malin. My mother was informed and decided to join him. But before joining him, she took me to a kindergarten which still exists. I always ask myself, how did my mother have the strength to look at me with her extended smile as if she was going to milk the cows? She did it quite well, but her eyes betrayed her. This visit in the kindergarten forces me to plunge much deeper into my memory, but I have difficulty to find my way through all those rooms which have changed several times. Besides the smell of the kindergarten and the square forms of the windows, I forgot everything. My wife, Judy, is always with me, supporting me in difficult moments. On the 19th of April, 1943, my parents were deported with transport number 20 from the Caserne d'Ossin to Auschwitz, where they were assassinated in the gas chambers. I always have mixed feelings when I'm in a train. For me, a train signifies life and death. It brought death to my parents, but for me, it was life, a new life without my parents. The picture of the house in Bruges was well conserved in my memories. My saviors, Jean and Josiane de Möllemeister, aren't alive anymore. I remembered they had children, Guy and Claudine. They didn't need words to soften my pains. Today, another owner lives here. Thank <laughs> you. 